Hi viewers, welcome to a new section of this course, Level Design. In this section, you will be learning level designing with tiled images. You will also learn about approaching UI, implementing game logic and scripting and placing enemies in the level. Now we move on to the first video of this section, Tiled for 2D Level Design. Here we will be using Tiled, a third-party tool that helps save a lot of time working on levels. In this section, we are going to finish the game that we started in the previous section, dealing with 2D physics. To begin, let's start by designing an even cooler level. Before we start creating our level, it's good practice to design our level on paper, even if it's some sketches of different ideas. We will be using a third-party tool named Tiled for this purpose. Tiled is a free 2D map editor that will save you a lot of time working on your levels. It is a tool that makes it much easier to create a 2D level instead of doing it within Unity by duplicating game objects. Here is the download link for it. Download the editor from here. Lastly, in order to use what you will create in Tiled, you also need to download another program called Tiled to Unity. It is a utility that allows us to import levels that have been created in Tiled as prefabs into Unity. Here is the link to download Tiled to Unity. After installing both programs, we can start by opening Tiled. This is what it looks like. Go to Files in the top left corner and click on the New button. A box will appear on screen where we can set the new map properties as shown. Adjust the width height and tile layer format. Click on OK. From the Tile Sets panel in the bottom right corner, click on New Tile Set icon. Link the source to the tile sprite sheet we have in our Project Platformer pack. Tiles Sprite Sheet .png and configure the rest. A new map will be created with our tiles being available for selection in the Tile Sets panel. Before we start drawing, a good rule of thumb is to select Snap to Grid and Snap to Fine Grid in the View menu. Click on any of the tiles and left click and drag your mouse inside the map. Here you will see that the tile is being placed in each grid. Now let's try to make something a little more pleasing to the eye. An example can be using a mixture of the tiles that we've got. While painting your way through the level, you may have noticed the Layers panel and that the current layer we have been working on is called Tile Layer 1. Let's call it Ground. And then add another layer called Water. Layers allow you to improve the organization of your level. All the work we've done so far has been put on the Ground layer, which is good, but now we need to add some water. Therefore, select the water layer and add some water tiles. Make sure to leave the top three tiles empty. We will use them next. Now to finish the water area of our map off. Add the wave tiles to the top of the empty space above the original water area, as shown. Each layer has its own properties. And the cool thing is that when we import the map using Tiled to Unity, it will apply each layer's properties to the soon-to-be in-game objects. This can save a lot of time later on. Select the ground layer and navigate to the Properties panel on the left-hand side of the screen and add Custom Properties. Add Unity is Trigger Property. and set it as false. Add Unity layer
and set it as default. Next is Unity Sorting Layer Name. Keeping it as foreground. Then Sorting Order. Keep it 0 and Unity Sorting Order as 0. Finally, Unity Tag as Untagged. Now let's repeat these steps again for the water layer, but change the Unity is Trigger property to True instead of False. In fact, we will use this trigger later in the game to check if the player falls into the water gap. So let's repeat all the steps. You should get something like this on your screen after doing that. The next step is to add some colliders to our tiles in the map. To add a collider to a tile, you need to select that tile from the Tile Sets panel and navigate to View Tile Collision Editor. After opening the Tile Collision Editor, use the Rectangle tool to fully enclose our tile, as shown on your screen. Repeat the previous steps for all of the tiles we have added into the map, except for any decorative tiles such as grass or rocks. When you are done, make sure to save the file. In our case, we will name it Platformer. Before going any further, make sure that our Unity project is open. In order to import what we have done so far in Tiled to Unity, we will need to use the Tiled to Unity tool that we installed earlier. After you have opened the program, you will see a window like this one. As you can see, this tool is pretty straightforward. We will add the file and then click on Help Import Unity Package to Project. And inside Unity, open the Platformer file and then Import again. What this will do is import the plugin into Unity so that we will be able to use the files that come next in our scene. Next, go to File, Open Tiled File, and select the saved file, platformer.tmx. Next, click on the Export To button. Make sure it is set to the Tiled to Unity.export file inside the folder Assets of Tiled to Unity. Finally, set the Vertex Scale to 0. 0 0.018 and then click on export. The files will be imported to Unity and the program will display the stats for the conversion as shown. You can close tiled and tiled to Unity as we do not need them and head back to Unity. A new folder has been created inside our project called tiled to Unity. Inside it, our map is set as a ready-to-use prefab in the Prefabs folder, under the same name we saved it as. In our case, it was saved as Platformer. Next, modify the scale of the background object to 531. And then parent it to the camera object, so that the background will follow our character as well. 
Now the scene should look like this. Here we can have an idea of how to organize everything in the project panel. Press the play button to see what we have accomplished so far. Our scene looks much better, but we can still improve it. Let's start by adding some clouds to the background object under main camera. This is how the scene will look afterwards. Remove the old floor objects and add some new floor tiles. Then assign colliders to them. Finally, parent them to the floor's game object. Go to Create, Create Empty. You will notice that we assigned the collider and the effector for each group of floor tiles instead of the tiles directly. This is something that I recommend, as it will be easier to organize and edit along the way, especially when your scene starts getting bigger. Also, make sure that the one-way boolean inside the platform effectors is true, as it will be better for our intended gameplay. Let's add some coins to the scene just above the top floor so that the player can increase his score by collecting each one. We will configure their behavior later, but for now, don't forget to add a collider to each coin and set the isTrigger property to true. Let's add the coin. Let's add collider. and make sure its trigger property is set true. Change the game object's name to coins. Now let's add an exit area in our scene, so that the player can finish the level and end the game. Grab a ladder sprite and add it at the end of the scene. And then attach a collider to it with the Is Trigger option turned on. We should group our scene items now, so that everything will be kept neat and clean for future changes. Create a new game object, named Scene Objects. We have finally finished designing our scene. The next step is to implement the user interface. Great! We created the level design for 2D games and used Tiled to achieve this.